All right, the crack baby. Finally getting around to doing a tutorial on this. I've had a few people ask me, bug me to do a tutorial on this fly um, that I developed a few years back for sea run cutthroat trout here in, here in Oregon. And uh, it, is been, it has been uh, an amazing fly. It's all I use this time of year. Um, I've caught countless sea run cutthroat. I've caught steelhead, coho, jacks. I've got a buddy that has fished variations of this fly on the Deschutes, and I believe the Matt Howe caught steelhead on both. So anyways, seems to be a really solid pattern for anadromous fish. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is what we're going to tie right here. And this color, the, the hot orange with the shrimp body, hot orange tail, and then these uh, uh, black speckled rubber legs. This is what I use nine out of 10 times. There's some other colors and you can experiment, um, see what works best for you. I tied them with yellow bodies and chenille and dubbing, but this particular one with the, uh, flat braid body and uh, UV coating seems to be, uh, seems to work really well. And plus it's super durable and looks cool. Let's get started. And uh, I'll also put a uh, materials list in the video description. Uh, real quick, the hook I'm using today, and you can use whatever your favorite streamer hook is. This is actually a uh, size six TMC 200 R uh, nymph hook. Um, and then we've got a 532nd tungsten bead. You can go bigger if you want or smaller, or you do, don't even have to use tungsten. I use tungsten because where I primarily fish on the Alsea River, there are these deep shelves that I found out that these sea runs will hang out underneath. And I've fished through runs with kind of unweighted or standard weighted flies and not get any, not got any fish and then have gone back through with a tungsten bead and pulled some fish out. So anyways, that's my long long-winded reason why I use tungsten. Uh, the thing about this fly, so it's it's basically is inspired by a reverse spider, um, but it uses the, always has the, the tungsten bead head, at least when I tie it, and the fly is tied in reverse. Well, we tie in the tail first, and then we go back up to the head and we'll actually finish at the tail. So, like I said, we're going to use some uh, hot orange saddle hackle here. Tying our tail first. And I will confess, I do not consider myself a fast tire. Um, I'm never in much of a rush. But for the purposes of the video here, I want to do this as quick as I can. So, hopefully, this turns out acceptable. Uh, the thread I'm using is Vivas 50D, which is great. It's super thin, super strong. The only drawback is if, uh, as a gel spun thread, if it gets frayed or if it gets caught on, you have like dried skin like I do, um, and gets snagged on it, um, it can cause problems. So it can be temperamental. Okay. We've got the tail in, we're back up at the front. Just putting a little wax on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little ramp. Um, I'm using some just some Senyo's orange laser dub. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna make a, a, a ramp behind, we're gonna fill in that space behind the bead, which is important because if you don't do this, the next step is gonna be to tie in the those rubber legs, or as my daughter called them when I took her, she called them tentacles. So we'll call them tentacles. Um, if you don't do this, th those legs will cinch down and they'll they'll tend to splay out and not not face forward and cleanly the way that I want them to. Okay. So just fill in that space behind the bead. Just make it a nice little, add a little bit more to even out the body. And I don't really think. 
think the fish probably care a whole lot, but I like to know that there's a, a decent taper. I like the flies to look good. Look back up here. Now for this size, or for most of them, you know this, um, I put a total of six rubber legs on here. So I do two sets of three. And we'll clean it up and trim it. <clears throat> I find the trick with this, the overall length, when it's done, those are gonna be a little bit shorter than the tail length. You can always trim it. And so what I do is I just hold three on there, right up against the bead, and I just let the weight of the bobbin kind of hold them in place. And then I position these roughly halfway around. You don't want to, oh, that one broke. Okay, that's better to find out now rather than later. Uh, you don't want to cinch down too tight on these up front because the, especially with um, thread this thin, it'll cut right through them. So we'll start with loose wraps and then um, cinch it down tighter when we go back. Be a little bit temperamental. This is probably the, the most difficult part. So loose wraps, and then cinch down as you go back. And it doesn't take much. Those things are not going anywhere. Like I say, we'll trim them when we're done. three on this side and just basically repeat the same thing. I like most other flies, if you sit down in the evening and do a few of these, once you start doing it, it this actually goes fairly quick. And the hackle's gonna go behind this. Okay, then we're gonna use a um, hot orange saddle hackle. And this is, again, this is gonna kind of face forward. So you want the concave side. We're gonna tie it in from the large section, or I'm sorry, the large end first. Probably shouldn't have trimmed that so short. We'll tie that in. Oops. Snug it down. That's one thing I do like about this thread. It is super strong. Like I said, we're going to be tying this backwards. So, I'll grab my hackle pliers. Just helps me to be a little bit more precise. And I'm going to start our wraps. The first one is always a little bit tricky. And we want to be going behind each wrap. So just take your time and pull those fibers forward. Do another wrap. How many are we doing here? What, five, six? I don't know. Whatever. for a good measure. Okay, hackle, capture that, cinch it down. And that I think is probably the, the hardest part of the fly. That and the, the legs. Trim some of these excess fibers that got captured in here. Okay, next we're gonna take some 
some wire. This is just small silver wire. And this is more for just securing the fly, not so much for looks, because that uh, that flat braid is pretty shiny as it is. So we're gonna tie this in. And then also, because we're doing, with the taper and every, every piece of material that we add up here. And then next is going to be, well, next and finally, is our little piece of shrimp flat braid. Tie that in, again, about halfway back. And that, again, it'll add to the bulk of the, uh, help, help build that taper. Hold that in, wrap back over it. And then go back to just forward of the tail. Don't go all the way to the tail. Give yourself a little bit of space because that's where we're going to finish the fly. Do the, uh, do the whip finish. And then here, you just want to be careful that you don't trap the hackle fibers in there. And I kind of pull those forward. And this, uh, this flat braid helps that hackle face forward. So I'll do a couple of nice tight wraps and it'll help cup that. There we go. Let's do one more here. Wire, we're going to re reverse wind to um, or sorry counter wrap the um, the flat braid and help hold hold all that down. And then the final thing, um, which just makes the fly look better and really adds to the durability, we're going to coat this thing with some some UV resin, and it makes for a very durable fly. It. If you watch any of my videos on here, see around cutthroat fishing, um, virtually all of those are caught with this fly right here. A little fuzzy in there. And then we whip finish. Whip finish tool does not work here, so I just use my hand. Go around. Oops. And like I said earlier, because of this gel spun, it gets caught on my fingers. I use a bodkin or a needle or something to hold that in place. And we just, voila, we are almost done. Two more fairly quick, easy steps. You don't have to do this, but I do just because I take a red Sharpie and, uh, color that thread, which by the way, for any other fly as well, the, um, the white thread takes a Sharpie really well. So, thanks to my, my buddy Eli for teaching me that trick. All right. And then we take some UV, just take our time, not too much. Don't want to end up with a big drip on here. Oops. And 
this is pretty much it. Um, again, you can, if you're curious, you can watch my other videos, but I, I cast this thing out and I do a fairly, fairly aggressive retrieve and those it, little tentacles that my daughter calls them or rubber legs, whatever, those kind of pulsate, um, through the water and, uh, with the tungsten bead, it also jigs pretty well. It goes up and down. And like I said, it just is a very durable, very, uh, fly has a lot of action and catches a lot of sea run cutthroat trout. So, uh, lengthwise on these, yeah, those are a little bit long. So we want these to be just a little bit shorter than the length of the tail. Not like so. There we are. There is the crack baby. Anyways, I hope this video helps. And if you uh, tie this, catch some fish, post about it in the comments. Let me know how it worked out for you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on how to make this, how to improve the fly. Curious to, curious to hear. But yeah, like I say, I hope this helps and thanks for watching.